Christian type person bringing so many disparate people together with a vision which is unusual in terms of its technique. Uh, and uh, so Peter's got a very big vision for a very unique methodology to deliver uh, better outcomes, architecture being one of the tools he's using, but also the deep commitment to authenticity. So everyone here believes a little bit in that in their own way and is contributing in a great way. And I just want to represent uh, the group by saying, uh, here we have a body of engaged local community and architects that want to make a difference. And learning the language, and we're all part of that journey. Uh, but what we're dealing with here is highly skilled people, ability to learn anything. They've done their bachelor's degree. They've got a master's underway, uh, which you know I'm not really sure exactly what that means. For a lot of you, it might mean uh, like beginning a whole journey around education, academic learning, and rigor, and continuing to add value to other people in the community from an academic point of view. But it might also mean getting to the nitty gritty of like making things happen. We met with Neil, one of the change managers um, and drivers of change from the UN and the state government. He came and contributed yesterday. Uh, and he believes, and his words were, this is ver validating and verifying where he's going with his vision for the future. And this is where the rubber meets the road for his vision. So it's a very big part of what you're doing to make this work. And it wouldn't be possible unless we had a place to make it land. So we're very grateful for the local community to be, to be engaged in this process. And uh, it's the beginning of the process um, for a lot of us, but it's been a journey for Peter for a long time. And Peter's had a vision for this for a long time, and we're standing on the shoulders of giants in a way of all the other architects that have been before us through this process, and Neil's been through the process a number of different times. He wouldn't bother to come back unless he saw rigor in the idea, and that there was a real difference that this could make for the community. So I'm going to hand over to one of the um, bachelor students, and uh, you can introduce yourself and the group as well. But um, your vision uh, is here to be delivered, and you've got a lot of experience, and we can uh, absorb that and see where what the vision for being is from a unique. Uh, oh, get out there, yeah. Pretty good. Right. Yeah. Come on, 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 come I have been spruiking all about this. See this symbol over here? It's a symbol of local heroes. Right? <laughs> what we've got here is a local hero. So, um, Rada um, and I, good to see you. Yep. <laughs> we met a couple of weeks ago down at the, um, the, museum, the historical museum, um, and it was actually quite accidental, quite quite um, fortunate, um, and that's the thing that scared me. Um, what Rada's doing is, is, is crafting extraordinary artefacts from timber, um, religious iconology, um, boats, and, and you know, truly exquisite world-class talent. And it's been very carefully hidden away in a little shed out the back of the museum, so after you pay your $8 to get into the museum, you still can't find it. Mind. You still can't find it. So that's, that's a masterpiece. I'm not sure who's made it, but they've got to really hit that on key. Yeah. So one of the lovely things that came out of that serendipitous yeah. meeting yeah. Yeah. was the um, Local Heroes Program, which we're currently in the process of developing. Yeah. And what that's about is about recognising that everything being there needs is already here. We just need to pull you out of the bushes and put you on display on the high street so we can start honouring what you're bringing. Yeah. So again, by all thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Thank you. Go have a seat. Yeah. <laughs> Great sense. Thank you for this a little yeah. bit. Thank you, Peter. And thanks so much our beloved friends that we've sort of got Catch to the UMC at. Awesome. <laughs> I wore this earlier as I was trying to be Peter. I don't know if I did a good job, you laughed a lot too. <laughs> Actually, it fits nice and stuff. But yeah, just like to thank you so much and for making this space available for us. We, yeah, we've really enjoyed working here and getting to know everybody in the community. And now, Rada, your um, your works of art are on Facebook at the moment. We Thanks appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, facilitate sort of uh, our group presentation to everyone and give a little intro. Um, there's four groups. Um, Few members of us aren't here, but we've got representatives of those groups, and it sort of encapsulates the study and the community engagement that we've been involved in. So, um, yeah, as, as Luke mentioned, we're um, architect, uh, soon to be graduates, but we're getting close. Um, but we're uh, bachelor students. Um, we've got our degrees, and we want to further our learning, and this has just been an amazing experience. So, thank you again. 
Um, yeah, so this presentation um, is hide and seek deep change. It's, it's deep change for being lean. It's what we're envisaging. And the future is now. Uh, being lean's future is now. And we're envisaging from what we've had discussions with and the artists and the creative people we've met and everybody. We've come together over the past couple of weeks and we've, we've pulled together a whole lot of ideas and feelings. And, and we sort of turn that into architectural ideas and, and things that, using our skills, coupling with the, the knowledge we've learned from everybody, some ideas of what, what maybe we can do to um, help bring the future of Bingley and what everyone wants it to be now. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, um, I'll begin representing my group, um, uh, five other guys. And essentially, the question that we're posing for, for, for our group and a group as a whole is, is a question of what if. What, what if the retail model that we're also used to growing up with um, could be dramatically changed? What if that could change and we could mix that with produce and farming and, and a real culture together under one roof or under multiple roofs, really reinvigorate that sort of old idea um, about arts and crafts and, and how that retail model actually works. And so the, the first thing that came to mind after speaking so um, with everybody was that idea of gratitude and how that idea of being thankful is actually something that that communities have, have it's not like it's been lost, but it have, it's been hidden in a way. And that idea of gratitude and, and the classic example of the amazing cuisine we have here from Pasteur is um, it's, we're thankful. And, and that is something that you, you can't just buy over the counter. You can't buy that interaction, that thankfulness. So that's really started to drive where we're all heading as a group, which has been awesome personally to experience. So moving on with that, we want to encourage, with this idea of changing the for the future, we want to encourage the makers like Rada to, to bring them out of the, the, the place in the museum to, to have right in the town square, right where people can see it and experience it. Um, and with a whole bunch of artists that being is so rich, that the community of being is, is so rich already, which is incredible. And it's about bringing that out and making people aware of it, which they may not know, which is a really rich experience. And so we want to continue that with not just the makers, but the nurturers as well, and have a space where they can feel safe to bring produce to, to not only um, bring a whole range of, of, of grown sort of produce, but to also, um, it's like a, a thought of teaching and, and showing the, the model of, of uh, like production to consumption and, and sort of showing the next generation and how that works and creating a community culture and blurring the lines between makers and growers and creating like a, a very, like a family in a way, which is, which is awesome. Um, and, and to add into that sort of mix of, of the, the, it's almost like a wild creativity that Beanley has that we want to tap into, that do-it-yourself culture, that sort of thrift shop culture that's really taking off at the moment, where people actually want to buy things like that, they want to engage, it, it's not so much just buy, but they want to exchange, they, they want that gratitude, they, they want to know the story behind how that dress or how that shirt came about, just like it's been amazing to, I haven't personally spoken with you, writer, but to hear the stories of, of how you've crafted these things and the reason why it's, it's, it's the small crafting and all that is incredible. And you can't buy that online, so that's awesome. Um, and so just as some architectural thoughts, some architectural possible interventions, which, um, it's more idea generation currently, is the idea of like a mystery box where those retail lines are blurred, where it's the counters removed from the from the, the space of buying and selling, it's an exchange. And where the, the walls are the walls are transparent, it's it's where you can come in, you can be welcomed in, and it's an exchange of feelings and emotions, not just cash money, and bringing sort of a family culture. And so yeah, so that's the that's the start of I guess group one's idea in a collective of everybody. So thank you very much. Our next group, uh, group two, and um, I'll, I'll give like a two line sort of intro to, to the group before I hand over to Albie, and then she can say that either I was way off or it was pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> group two is all about like diversity um, and uh, sort of reinvigoration. 
Yeah, so reinvigoration and diversity, but I won't say any more. I'll be yeah, there. Thank you. Spent at the university, 
thinking about being lean, talking about being lean, looking it up online, drawing maps, doing all these sort of little sketches that we've been doing. What we've realized is that this is really about life. It's about life and it's about people. And all the architectural processes that we like to go through, they tend to be about buildings, they tend to be about construction and those kind of things. But it's actually been quite difficult for a lot of us to step back from that and say, what do the people of being lean really want? What do the people of being lean really need? What are the things that make their lives better for all of us, for, for them, and for us as visitors, and for people who may live here in the future, or for people who live here now and then move away, they may move back, and all these sort of things. What's important to those people? That's basically all of us here. And, and the important part is life. It's about having uh, an engaged and active city centre that we can all enjoy. Um, and so in our investigations, what we've come to realise is the foundations for this is here. There's great people here, and we'll get to you very soon. <laughs> I feel like my spot <laughs> Sorry about this, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when you get a sign later. So. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the local council and the state government and the federal government have contributed towards a great new town centre that has um, been constructed and it's been built and the build quality is excellent and all of these great things have happened but we need to then populate that with life. We need to take the foundation and the platform that is here and amplify the greatness that where it exists in the form of some of our local police heroes, one of whom is on the now. That's, yeah. That's your photo. Yeah. <laughs> Tur it turns out that this statue was purchased by the school in Mackay that Maddie went to. So there you go. Okay. Kind of one of those yeah, yeah. things that come around. Um, uh, after all that, I went to her high school. So there you go. Um, and here we are talking to you. So, yeah. um, you know, we've, we've come up with this term local heroes because all of the people that we meet and all of the various characters that we meet through this process have all been really talented people. And they've all been, they've all had some, something really special and something really unique uh, and sort of of this place that's, that's just brilliant. It's really, really amazing. Unfortunately, sometimes that's a little bit hidden. And what we can use is this great foundation that we've been given. We've been given... Hello? Peter, come on in, buddy. We're safe to see you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should probably rewind this a little bit. <laughs> we've sort of met great foundations. <laughs> so, you know, we've been given this, this great platform upon which to place our heroes. So, um, this is Ryder. This is Peter, yeah, Peter. local craftsman, yeah. council urban planning boss. Good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't going to say that myself. <laughs> uh, is on words. Um, and and that's the kind of thing that I believe this kind of a project can bring out. It can take the greatness that is perhaps hidden, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and place it upon the stage that's provided for us using the great resources of our government to provide. The, the location and the ability to show off what we're proud of. Um, so as an intervention as well, um, this is not, we, we went looking around and we went talking to people and speaking to the local councillor, she was talking about skate parks and sporting activities and those kind of things that are also really um, quite um, popular and have a very passionate following here in Beanley. Um, and one of them, those is skateboarding. Um, I'm personally quite afraid of skateboards. I fell off a broken arm when I was a kid. So there's like this really deep kind of like thought about skateboarding. Um, but there's there is a real craftsmanship to the construction and artwork of skateboards. Um, skate parks themselves are quite often, unfortunately, a little bit graffiti. Um, that's something that we perhaps tend to look at negatively, but we should because that is people of that culture taking charge of their own spaces and facilities and making it their own. Uh, we think we can amplify that using some of the... Um, okay. uh, using some of the, you know, we've got quite a number of vacant shop fronts available to us, including the one 
exactly opposite the Newtown Square. Can we use that for these local craftsmen, these sort of extreme athletes in my eyes, um, who do this particular sport and take that to an extreme and, and really kind of show it off? That's something that can attract people from around the area. It attracts all of the people who enjoy that, who live in this area, to the one place where they can really enjoy it together. And there's a there's a there's a subculture going on there. Um, again, personally, I'm sort of scared of it. But that's the sort of thing that it doesn't matter that I'm scared of it. It doesn't matter that that's something that I'm fearful of. People love it and they really enjoy it. And that's the kind of thing that I think we can use uh, the the resources that we have. To, uh, to encourage in the future. So I'll hand it back to Michael and hopefully one of the slides will help me. <laughs> and we'll move on to the next group. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Dean Mitchell. So that's great. So um, yeah, we're moving on to our, our final uh, group for the day. Um, yeah, after, after Bill um, presents, there will be some sort of discussion as well, sort of uh, okay, a question. So kind of forum that I'll hand it over to Peter to facilitate. But well, you're doing such a good job. So um yeah, so um, Bill Bill's group uh, has been looking at their eco literacy and the um sort of the anchoring of, of the mode of productions uh, and it's sort of been a theme that that's kind of been, been linking um, throughout all this in terms of I guess our, our framework that we've been sort of going through um, the the green being lean and, and and something that is. Is something that we can all we can all learn and take from. So I'll hand it straight over to you, Bill. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Bill, and I will be presenting our our group Skyrocket. And just before I show you some of our group idea, I just want to apologize for my English speaking. If you can't understand anything, just please ask. And um, I'll try my best to you know like fresh like ideas from our group. And our group has this mission. Uh, for Binley to make sure Binley become a town where um, uh, could sp uh, spend a few days going back to the basic, um, self-sustainable uh, emphasis and place for uh, vocational learning and holiday and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> so. Um, the main focus of our vision is uh, utilizing uh, Bingley's uh, richness historical agriculture as a strong basic to attract uh, tourism and become uh, self-sustainable in the terms of economy and uh, food supply and reinforce a single uh, community belonging. And here is some of the process uh, uh, in our imagination. We are like Bingley in the future is not a place just buying product from someone else. We actually um, produce, uh, we, we plant, we harvest, we um, consume, and we supply. So basically, just there's a vision like uh, the community garden in Bingley will supply, uh, su uh, supply the freshness to the local restaurants. And the local restaurant will uh, produce. Uh, special uh, local food for the tourists and the local community and the local community will produce our uh, local for this uh, community garden or uh, farm in the future. <coughs> yeah, uh, for us uh, gardening, yes, this is one of our vision in the future, like trying to incorporate more uh, greener raising into the city and uh, produce fresh supply uh, in the future. And like eco living, like uh, this will be another tourist attracting point for uh, in the future. And like yeah, this is another example of um, incorporating uh, vegetation into like our society. Like it's not just only for decoration, but at the same time, um, it can incorporate into our uh, food supply from a restaurant or create a unique uh, experience to live in. Or even just visit uh, the lake, and then here's another great example of like uh, like the eight people living. Uh, tree, yes. we, uh, this is everything is still focusing on like um, just uh, bringing back all the agricultural like 
in terms of um, the past sugar sugar industry, like the wine, like um, the wrong like wine industry. Yeah, uh, this is an example of the community garden in our imagination. It's like uh, this is this will reinforce the community bonding and uh, and uh, reinforce the interaction with in this uh, society. And we also also thinking about like the lo local production, like um, we can produce from the plantation we made from the uh, community garden. And yeah, it's just as I mentioned in the beginning, like that system like is will ensure like this uh, enough uh, employment in, in, in the area and at the same time produce like a fresh product for all self. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bill. So that concludes our four groups, I suppose. Um, and for us, the journey's not over, and I don't think the journey ever is over in terms of pressing on and, and, and developing ideas and, and talking things out with the community. So as this picture um, demonstrates, it's uh, what we shared uh, this afternoon is welcome our new guest as well. Thank you. Um, what, I'll just close that. what we shared um, today is, is our thoughts about how we can bring everything together, how we can rejuvenate this already amazing place, how we can exemplify the custodians of, of this area. And um, feel free at the end of this to have a look around. And we've got heaps of uh, different ideas on display. And um, So just in, yeah, I guess in concluding what we've shared today, um, in 10 weeks time, our ideas that were formed now will go towards a, a larger intervention and with further research and talking with the community more in, engaging more with the locals. We'll continue to craft an idea of what's what's needed, what can be exemplified more. Um, and we're just so very grateful um, for everyone coming today. Thank you so much for taking your time. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, so we just want to continue, I guess, we want to continue to multiply the generosity that is already here and the platform that has already been um, made in terms of physically, emotionally. It's, it's quite an amazing place. And it's been a pleasure, as all of us has, to, to learn about being there. Um, so just in closing, we just want to bring our attention to the three sort of points that tie in everything that we've sort of shared. So we want to attract global tourism to the area. We want a green bee where nature and agriculture is, is definitely championed. And we want to champion the maker movements, the, the people who make the amazing food, people who make the amazing crafts. So. Um, Without further ado, I'd just like to say thanks again. And um, we, I think we might be handing it over to a bit of um, a forum soon. Um, but I'd just like to introduce Peter to come up and um, take the floor now. And I'll transfer the hat. Thanks, guys. <laughs>